Okay. All righty, we're going to go ahead and get started. It is Thursday, July 11th, 2019, and we are holding our board meeting. We'll go ahead and begin with roll call, and we'll start with Larry. Larry Jepson, board member. Randall Bagley, board member. Steve Norton, superintendent. Roger Pulsford, board member. Kathy Christiansen, board member. Chris Corcoran, board member. Jeff Nielsen, board member. Terry Rhodes, board member. And Dale Hansen, business administrator. Okay, thank you. Um, and now we'll go ahead and have our pledge and mission statement by Terry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our mission is to educate students for success in a changing world. Thank you, and I would imagine we don't have any public input. Yes, we do. Okay, <laughs> so we'll move on down to the consent agenda, and I will take a long, should I wait and see if there's any public? <laughs> okay, all right. I will take a motion to um, approve the consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda. I second it. All righty, we'll vote. Yeah, let's see, yes for me. I still don't have a computer, yeah. Okay. So all the votes are in then, you, and unanimously in favor of the motion. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, we are going to have um, no action, action agenda. Nothing is on the action agenda, and I will begin with the, the TSSA plans on the reports. I will take a short amount of time, but... I'm going to give you a few basic guidelines when you review a plan to take a look at. <clears throat> this handout is also uh, attached to the board docs this so you can um, get another copy if you need it there but to start with the three general bullet marks there to what you'll be able to do as a board member is to add a comment and the way you do that is you slide down the document and do a right click as soon as you do that there's a little box there to click to make a comment and then you just type in your comment that's all you do I'll show you one of those when I bring a plan up all the tabs are on the bottom of the summary page. Maybe I'll bring up Ridgeline's plan here quick. If, if I wanted to make a, say, a comment right here, I'd right click it and I'd make my comment. Okay, that's the way you end up making a comment on a plan. All the tabs are on the bottom of the page down here, the summary page, the goal one, goal two, and three and four, when you look at them. And so right now I'm going to take just a couple minutes and I'm going to go through three schools and just give you some suggestions of some things that you look at. So I have Ridgeline's plan up right here. And when on your handout here where it says under the summary tab, I suggest the first thing you look for is the remaining funds right there. What I'm circling should say zero. That means they've allocated all their funds. So that's the first thing you look for. Uh, the second thing is the number of goals. See, Britain, they can have anywhere from one to four goals. She has two goals, and that's okay. You're going to see some schools that only have one goal, okay? And some schools will have four of them as I've gone through them. <clears throat> the budget by category down here, the ones that I think would interest you as a board member is the first one there is 1310 teacher salary. How much money overall in their plan did they spend on teacher salary? Because <clears throat> part, part of the TSSA plan was to provide additional funds for teachers for additional things that they're asked to do. You know, so I kind of look at that and say, oh, have they allocated some funds in there to do some things like that in Does their plan? Does it matter how much it is? 
No. Okay. But I have I have seen a few plans that none there are there's no actual salary. They've put it into P, uh, professional development mm -hmm. type things. So they're I guess they're paying them for that in that area. Another one to look at would be um, 1610 Paraprose. Mike, Mike. Yeah. I would mention if, if they are trying to pay salaries under a professional development code, that would be incorrect. because right. they, it would have to be up there. That's a professional service. So if you were bringing in an outside teacher Speaker. or instructor or something like that to train the teachers, that would be appropriate. But if we're paying our teachers, it should be up under the teacher salary <coughs> line okay. item. All right. Uh, another one to look at, I would suggest, is paraprofessionals. Lot, lots of schools will use paraprofessionals uh, to help ease the burden for the teacher. And you'll read that in their plans. Like, but Ridgeline here, the, they don't have anything in there for paraprofessionals at all in their plan. Now, can you guys see this plan on your screen? Mm -hmm. Mine's okay. clear over to the left. Yeah, mine is a little bit too. Clear over to the left? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I wondered why you were kicking your neck. Yeah. I was wondering why now you were doing that over, too. It's farther to the left. You gotta go the other way. Yeah, it's seen. I've gone all the way I can go that way. Huh. Do you wanna look at Mike? No, that's all right. I can okay. see the numbers there. The next one is supplies, 6,100 right there. How much money they put into supplies? Because a lot of times that can just be a, a bit of a rabbit hole to throw stuff. And uh, when I actually go in and show you a goal, when you look at supplies, see what they say they're gonna do with those supplies. So supplies is one to take a look at. And then uh, another suggestion I have is the 7300 equipment. I've had to go through lots of plans and make comments to tell the schools you really shouldn't have any money in 7300 because that's for a piece of equipment, that a single piece of equipment that costs $5,000 or more. So and is that capitalized equipment then? or oh. <laughs> What's that? Is it capitalized equipment that they're doing? Or how? All right, that what? stays right here. Yeah. <laughs> what is that section, Mike? Sorry, I just need a little more clarification on 73. Uh, an example of that, a photocopier. That's going to cost more than $5,000. But really in this plan, they, they shouldn't be buying a photocopier. Okay. A, couple, a couple schools... Uh, tried to run that through and a um, couple elementaries and Gary shut that off. Okay. That's, you shouldn't be doing that. And we've sent some, some information out to schools on that. So that's what you look for in, in uh, budget category. But of course you can, you can look at any of these categories you want and uh, see what they're, but this is just a summary of what's down embedded in the four goals or the two goals or however many goals they have. So, Mike, let's say we have a question on one of those categories. Who's the best person to get definition from? Okay, so now I'm going to bring it, I'm going to show you here. Okay. Now, if you go to the goal tab, that's the next thing on your sheet here. If, like, if I grab her goal one, what I what a couple of, of um, suggestions I have here is description right here. Did they put a basic... And it doesn't need to be a very lengthy description, but did they put a description in for the goal right there? That's what you're looking at. The next uh, thing to take a look at is which of these four categories did they select? These are the only four categories that they can use. So one of those four need to be in this area right here. And as soon as this is put in, it transfers over to the summary page on the very first page. Um, the next thing that I have on the little cheat sheet is the um, measure success. Uh, I've had to talk to a few of my principals down in here to say, have you actually have some plan in here that's measurable? Yeah, you, we know what your goal is, but can you, based on your statement here, can you really measure it by what you're saying there? Now, Brittany is quite lengthy in what she's saying here and her how she's gonna measure. Most schools aren't that detailed in how they're going to measure. Okay. And then the next tab that I have here is on the budget. So this is where, uh, Jeff, they're going to put some items in here. If you have a question, like she has cer certificated employees 
$55,000, and that's what she's going to do with it right there. Okay. We, we have a lot of plans that have not put this little statement in right here. They have the amount right here, but they didn't put any explanation. <clears throat> I, could, I, could, I could take this amount, I could go up in here and read their plan and probably pull out most of this information, but we've asked all the principals, you need to add one or two sentences right here on what you're spending that money for. Yeah, because I mean, if, we, if we're gonna question it, someone else will, right? Yeah, Okay. so, so if there's something on here and you're questioning, like here, see, she, she said substitutes $3,300, but she didn't make any statement. I think why she did that is substitutes pretty straightforward. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna have substitutes. But like go on this in-service training. If you had a question on here that you wanted to ask, you could right click on it, ask a comment. Okay. And, and then she would, who, she would respond to that comment. Well, our comments go right to the principal. Yeah, go right to the, right to the plan. They'll attach right to the plan. So additionally, Mike, how, as far as the categories that they go in, how, I mean, um, let's say we've got a, a question of which bucket it should be in. How yeah. critical is that? And should we even be messing with that? Well, and the only thing I think you're 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 talking about which budget here? Is it yeah, the, for the numbers off to yeah to yeah, the left yeah. there. Yeah, the thing I would suggest for you to take a look at is, I've been going through with all the principals saying you really shouldn't have any money sitting here, in 7,300. And quite a few schools had money going in there because they were going to buy computers. And they they know they can't do that because they can't do that on trust lands. Right. So I don't know why that didn't transfer across, you know. But most of them have corrected that. Okay. okay. Is the same list of what they can have and what they can't have uh, for this as it is for the trust lands? No, trust. This this is much this is more much lenient. more open. Okay. More lenient. Okay. Okay. For you guys. So that was my last comment on the the goals tab was, did they add descriptions when they allocated funds here? Did they add enough description here that you really know, like for this supplies, do you, does that note give you enough information on what she's buying that money, using that money for? Okay. The next one real quick I'm gonna use is Nibley Elementary. Okay, zero balance right there, so he's <coughs> allocated it all. He only has one goal. If I run down here, and, and you can quickly look at these budgets that I suggested you maybe take a quick scan at. He, did now, he didn't have anything in equipment allocated. And if I go to his one goal, goal number one, there's a statement. Is that measurable? The way he says that, can, is that a measurable goal? And do you have any questions on like right here, supplies. I, I purposely put that, he put $139, but he didn't add any explanation. So we would comment to him. So if I was reviewing this, I'd enter a comment right here and say, what are you planning on, what supplies are you planning on with that $139? Now that's not a lot of money, I know that. Sure. Okay, so it's really your discretion. So if you go up to the workman's comp, and Those are automatic. Okay. Yeah. The only ones you worry about are the light. Yet, see the dark yellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are uh, those go in have to happen because of salary. They're tied to a salary cost. But the light yellow, they are adding in, and you should question if there's not an explanation by the light yellows. If I go to South Cash, here's here's an anxious principal. He has four goals. <laughs> Okay, he's, he's balanced at zero, so he's allocated all of them. You can take a look here, um, 16,000 in teacher salary. He has 13,000 in supplies. I can go into these goals and find out what he's going to be doing with those funds. 12,000 in paraprofessionals, but he has nothing here in equipment. He did have stuff here in equipment and he moved it out because I told him he can't have that in there and he moved it into tech-related type areas. So if I go, and I'll just do one of his goals, there's a statement, 
his measure, you know, um, how he's going to measure it. If I go down here and look at his budget, he's added an explanation for his allocation under certificated employees. He's added, he's pretty well added everything that he needed to do on there. Goal two, quickly, I can go down and look at his budget. He's, he's added everything in. This is what he's doing with this uh, 6,500, where before a lot of plans didn't have this listed at all, just had the money amount there. I'll jump to his goal four. The only thing he's allocating money for here is contract services. He's bringing in someone to do some in-service training and what's he doing with those supply funds. Then if I go back to the summary page, everything that's tied in those four goals is right in here. It adds them all up together. So have you looked at all of these and cleaned them I've, up somewhat? I've, I've looked at a lot. I've looked at all the secondaries. Gary's looked at the elementaries, but I had to add a lot of comments about um, measurable goals that I wanted to retake a look at and the equipment line. Can you do that on their school land trust funds too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could if you would want me to do that. Okay. But anyway, that's that. This is really uh, this is so much different than the school land trust because this is going no farther than right here at, with the, our local board. So it's really, and and I see schools changing plans on this one. The first because this is the first go around and they're trying to feel their way through this and they'll probably be adjusting some funds and things like that and uh, they'll, they'll be okay with it. Now it's going to be up to you if they're really going to make a drastic change on how they've allocated their funds. Are you expecting them to not only make the change in the plan, the allocation, or do you expect them to come to you again when they do that? Is we haven't. We have not given them any direction. Is that our decision? That's or? your decision. If you want that or not, or you leave that to Gary and I. That's a. The board just has to give us some direction. So. So, so Tim's plan will be to give you access to this, and you'll see all those plans like I showed you just a minute ago, and you just go in and grab your school, and you can see it. So if they want to change something, they'll come to a board meeting just like we did with the That school. is up to you guys. They don't have to. There's no requirement for them to do that. That's you guys' decision if you want them to do that or not. Or you leave that up to Gary and I if they want to make a change. It's totally your discretion what you want. Well, it seems like it would be a lot easier for them and less time if they could not have to come to the board meeting to change. Yeah. That's, like I say, it's up to you guys. Do you guys have that. any input on that? Ultimately, we have to answer, right, for the... Yes, we do. Well, yes, we do. We could set a dollar limit if it's just above a certain figure so you're not worried about uh, if they move $139 out of that one category. Right. I mean, that's not hardly worth... Their time. ...time and effort, but mm -hmm. if, say if there's... A change in a goal or a change over 5,000 in or something like that, then it comes here. Something like that's just in a thought. Mm -hmm. so. Anybody so, have any opinions on that yet? Can I think they, about Dale, it for a, your mic take a little time to think about it? Was uh -huh. talking. Did you have something that was concerned? What will the what will the accountability be at the end of the school year, Mike? I think, you know, the state is so far behind. They're just glad we got a plan in right now, and they we have the allocation letter. I, who knows what they're going to say? I think it's just going to be the accounting coming through Dale's so office. So, do you that, feel like that's something that we should look at? Is just look, to look at them again to see that they spent all of the money yeah, and it, all of it'd that. Be, it'd be okay to take a look at them again. And so if we look at them at now and then look at them at the end of the school year. Yeah, or maybe look at them in, in April. Okay. Because they know they have a crunch on school land trust. They've got to have that down under 10%. We have the same guidelines on this. Um, so if, if you want to take a second look at them, when will these be available to review? Um, 
They're available right now. Tim just has to give you access. Okay, right and he they'll just send us an email? He'll send you a, a shared file document, and then you'll be able to go in and see all the school plans, and you just go click on it like I did, and it brings okay. it up. So pardon my ignorance, Mike. It, who audits this? What's that? Us. us? We're the auditors. We're okay. The last That's why I'm asking if we should look at it again at the end of the school year. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But Do we you, want to encourage them to use all the money, don't we? Oh yeah. You know, sometimes it's hard to get right down to you know to the very bottom because there you don't want, you can't go you can't go over your budget. So we're, we gave them the same guidelines, 10%, no more than 10% uh, carryover on it. Do you it, have any preference as to how we handle the changes, if they have any? Well, I, I think what the superintendent said, you know, if it's greater than a $5,000 budget move or a change of a goal, those are two big things. But here again, if, if you guys want to be more involved in it than that, then you certainly can. But Gary and I can run the rest on it. Okay. All right, so why don't all of us think about it and we'll just put this on the next sure. um, board meeting to see what okay. your thoughts are sure. on it. And sure. maybe after you've looked at all of the plans that you're checking, um, that might give you some questions or concerns or um, whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Chris, do you wanna take some of the plans and read? Sure. Okay, so then you, you would have um, Cedar Ridge, Greenville, North Park, and Green Canyon. Okay, and so the ones of us who are gonna take it, we're off. That's all, okay? All do right. you still want me to do cash? Yes. Okay. Yep. Anybody else have a question on your assignment? I don't really know what they are <laughs> right now without looking them up, but if you know what they are, that's yeah. great. Okay. Uh, thanks so much, Mike. That's a lot of work to have put that together. Is our district like way ahead of <laughs> some of the others? Yeah, we've, we've had a few districts contacting us because the state told them, just look what Cash put together for mm -hmm. a beginning plan, an oh, outline. And congratulations. Then they want to see how we're accounting for it. But everybody will be different this first year. Yeah. And they'll start tightening things up, I'm sure. And the one thing that I was concerned about was if it was going to be a whole lot of extra work for the principals, are they complaining or is it okay? They want the money, so they have okay. to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a good right. point. Yeah. It's a simple form. It it's is. It's very it's straightforward not very and hard. simple. It's Tim not hard. created a really good form. And so I don't feel bad about them having to be this little bit accountable. Yeah. Okay. But it's yeah. more work for Dale, right? Yeah, but on the track at all. Make sure they stay within their budgets one more program to track. It's like creating a whole bunch of little mini districts out there is what oh, it yeah. is. Do you have help or do you have to do that just with your, you have some help on that? Okay. All right, thank you very much. Anybody have any more questions? Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, um, the next item on our report is um, <coughs> to retire our board policies and this is our second round on it, right? Okay, so Larry, um, it says it's presented by me, but actually by you. Is there anything you want to say on this? Uh, Tim has uh, gone through it. Uh, Jenda, I've, I've been in touch with her and she's gone through it. And uh, as a board, we've had an opportunity and uh, all the feedback says this is a good move. Okay, so I think I should have probably put this on the action agenda. Is it okay if we put it on the action agenda for next time? That's fine. Okay. Anybody have any questions about this? Okay. Sorry, I kind of messed up on that one. All right. Um, all right. Then the updated board goals, if you want to open up those. Um, we talked about this last time after our uh, board evaluation. And I did have it on for us to vote on, but then I got to thinking about number five. I think we were okay with one, two, three, and then four kind of had two goals in it. So is everybody still okay one through four on those four board goals for the next year? 
All right, on number five, here was what I started to think about. Um, Steve had suggested that maybe we do it four times a year, and that seemed like a lot to get together with students for input on how they believe the district can help them be successful in their education. But, so I said maybe three, but if we do three, we leave out of high school, right? Have you had any thought of how you want to handle this, Roger? I, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think we probably should meet at each high school. Are you to willing to do that? And if then, the superintendent is. That's about every, every two months. I think we should go to each high school. Okay. So um, I'll put this one on. Oh, any other feedback, questions, concerns? You you good with doing it four times? Mm -hmm. All right. But then we miss cash high too. So. That that was the other thing I wondered about. Should we do cash? How should Okay. If she she wants to do that, it's kind of hard to get um, participation from cash. But I will do that. I'll check with her. Well, well it and be for, with the kids, they might not feel real comfortable with all of us showing up. No. Well, school. and I you know, and I, I I guess I would say I. I don't want it to look like it's a Spanish Inquisition either. Yeah. So we might break up and just have <laughs> a couple some of us one. go yeah. and to get the feel so that mm -hmm. we could do it and different ones could go to different for the first year or two. Okay. Because it is kind of intimidating when this many adults. Okay. Uh, you're going to overwhelm kids. Well, so we could also it. have, um, we could all participate in everyone, but just a few of us be in front. Yeah. And the rest of us be yeah. in the we audience can, with the students. We can just kind of play it by ear to begin with, but so if you had the five, uh, you'd probably, we'll get them in. We want to try and get them in before May, so uh, we'll, okay. we'll work something out. Well, how Mike? about if I change the goal instead of three times a year to meet with each individual high, high school? school? Yeah, that's what I do. Okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. All right. So and if we have, it could be different groups. I'm hoping you're not. All I think we everyone. all talked about having maybe one would be the key club and one would be the exec and mm. one would be a bunch of people who are interested in the fine arts and. Maybe we should leave it up to the principals to choose a group of, cho of students. Just and I, I'm all right, but I'm just saying I, I'm not going to tell them. What, I didn't want to. I didn't want to tell them. We want to meet with this particular group right. of kids. Leaving up to the principal who they pick, that's fine with me. Okay, and maybe like just 15, 20 minutes with them unless it, they go longer? I think you better plan on a half hour. Okay. Yeah. All at right. Least. So well, if, if, we have, if we have more than th th uh, three board members there at the meeting, it becomes oh, an official board important. meeting. We would have to record it, take minutes, we'd have to do everything, oh, have to advertise it. Um, it becomes a regular school board meeting. Um, That's it's not right. just a chance social yeah. getting together. So it would have to, I don't know if you'd want to have it out in every school and have all the board members attending every meeting. So that'd be <laughs> difficult. Yeah. That is a good point. Well, Roger, will you just take this and run with it and at the next sure. meeting kind of let us know what you figured out. Sure. And if you want to give us assignments to which ones we go to, and then if it doesn't work out, we can trade schedules okay. or whatever. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe the high schools that w are in our precincts would be good for each of us to yeah. attend mm -hmm. as well. Okay, thanks for feedback. Good, good um, feedback. Okay, um, board committee reports, we did not have any. And for uh, the board president report, I, I just wanted to um, bring this up, and I don't know that there is really a solution for this, but if anybody has any ideas on it, um, Larry and Terry and I and Mike went to the task force meeting on um, taxation, and um, they have quite a group <coughs> Um, who is looking into this, but there's not one person on that task force who has any kind of edu public education background. Yes, there are. Is there? Uh, Senator Main is a retired Granite Parapro. Is that sufficient, do you think? Well, that committee? and this is, this is a legislative subcommittee, so we can't okay. 
I mean, we could complain that they don't have any, but um, six of them, six of the 12, half of them are on education appropriations committees, either higher ed or public ed or both in the case of Hilliard. Um, so I'm certain that, that the House and Senate both feel like that the people that, the education is very well represented. No, they're not teachers, but they are, half of them, half of the committee is, sits on education appropriations committees. But they don't have an education background other than the one superintendent? Senator Maine. We well, there is, um, Gary Corn Cornea, Cornea? How do you say his name? Cornea? Is a BYU professor. But that's not public ed. Well, it's ed. It is. <laughs> and your point was there's that doesn't have an education representative. Okay. Well, I should add the extra word. And I'm not arguing education. with you. I'm just telling you I looked up <laughs> all of them to see which which committees that they sit on. Thank you for when I saw that you were that this was an issue. So I just looked up each of the members that's on the task force and which committees that they sit on and or what their background is or whatever and so that I'm just giving you that yeah, feedback. Yeah, I got that. Remember, I never get offended. I appreciate the good information. <laughs> 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 okay, so what do you say, Steve? Not well, worry about it? Uh, yeah, I don't think you can worry okay. about the makeup of the committee. It, it is nice to have that information yeah. because you would hope that those would be people who would want to protect the silo, but I don't, I don't know just because they're on that committee that that's a guarantee. But no, because uh, Gibson, Fillmore, and Briscoe all spoke about getting rid of the silo system, and they're all on public ed approach. Briscoe did? Mm -hmm. It was hard to hear him say that. Wow. Yeah. And his, his exact comment was, or exact, his comment was something to the effect that other states put all of their money into one pot and they all pay more per student for education than we do. And well, I went, <gasps> yeah, 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 boy, is that, is that, is that isn't some reason to, to look and say. Well, it was, it was shocking coming from yeah. Representative Briscoe. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that really you, you ruined my night. It, it ruined mine. Yeah. <laughs> I I I really, Kathy. I was talking earlier. Um, Dell and I have been working on some material, and I'm going to go down and to the final meeting that's held down in Lehigh. Um, we Ooh, know I that's bet where that'll the be. Community is going to make their last stand. Uh, I think it'll be good for them to hear something about education. Uh, from somebody who's been here the whole time, um, and there are very few of us that have been doing that. Dell and I just happen to be two that uh, I don't know of any other business managers who've been here during that whole cycle either. So, what is the timeline that they're on? Pardon? What is the timeline that they're on? Is uh, they're they're on this by the 30th of July, and then. Uh, plan is to schedule a special session. Uh, I'm not so sure that that's going to happen, but uh, if they're going to ring, if they're going to get a constitutional question out there, they might just go ahead and do that. If, if they're going to go some other direction, I would think they'd wait till January and do it in the regular session. All right. But what I, what I assume we can do, and, and uh, the press picked up real heavily the first meeting in Box Elder. They hit the one in Kearns, and then it's been silent as they've gone out to Moab and Washington. Maybe the local papers picked it up a little. I think they'll pick up the last they don't meeting. Get a time like that. And then I think we have an obligation. Um, the last legislative committee meeting that I went to from with filled with USBA people and superintendents, the more I, I got asked to express some feelings and some information that I had gleaned. And the more I talked, the more glazed eyes I got out of the people that I'm hoping would know more about what's 
been going on than they did. So if our own people don't have that kind of knowledge, you, we know the legislature doesn't have that kind of knowledge. Lyle's been here during that whole period. He knows, but he has selective memory and, and remembers what he wants to remember and how he thinks it was. Uh, and so I just think that after we need to have all of our people come in when we meet with them in, in the fall, hopefully they haven't had a special session. If they schedule a special session, we're gonna have to get them in earlier. But just spend some time talking to them about the research of what's happened over the last few years. And just to give you an idea, if we'd have received that 300, there's almost $8 billion that could have gone to public ed went to higher ed over the last 24 years. I know we've got a higher ed person sitting here and I'm not fighting higher ed. I'm just saying that money originally before 1996 was scheduled to go to public schools. If we'd have had our share of that, it was 338 million. Um, that uh, if we got our share of that, and put it into salary as we've had over the last few years, we would have a $48,000 base salary right now for teachers. And we artificially have one at, what is it this year? 43. 43? Yeah. So they'd have had a $5,000 bump and our salary schedule would have been based on about 48,000 and go up from there. Right now we have the first five steps are condensed and do not grow. Uh, we just put them on and so it, it in essence has been teacher salaries across the state that have been affected by not getting that money. And my plea is just going to be, I think every citizen of the state of Utah who pays taxes needs to participate in the issue of not having enough money in the, in, in the sales tax and transportation tax and not just expect that we're going to keep one group of employees in the state at an average salary lower than necessary to pave roads and to meet the needs of, of state government. We need to concentrate on those other two silos and see what we can do and, and leave public ed out of the discussion so that we don't have another 23 years go by that we don't adequately fund public ed. So. Um, I, I kind of um, crammed and read a bunch of the information that you gave to us about the, um, the budget. And what I found from reading it, and maybe some of you will want to add to this, was that over the years we have had increased amounts of money put into public ed, but it's only been enough to fund the increase of students and the cost of living. So really, nobody's ever got a raise. Or have we had enough money for the programs that we try to run? We just had kind of this scam. Selectively, the they picked areas that they have thrown money at, and um, and then selectively, they've also pulled back on money. And I think they ought to be reminded that there was a time when they helped us pay Social Security and retirement. There was a time when they paid for depreciation of buses. All those things were taken away and have never come back in the form that they were before. So, and she's right, essentially, we funded the growth. And that, that's an important thing. That's, <coughs> that's something the legislature ought to be praised for. Because before that, they just said, well, you got more students, but, but we're not going to figure that in. And it's been within the last eight years or so, I'll have to get that down for sure, that they actually recognize that just keeping it level, like the same amount of money behind every kid, that's a major milestone for the Utah legislature. And that's what has happened over the years. So you can total all that up, and it looks like they've thrown a lot of money. But, but what they've done is just kept the level of support equal for the new kids coming in, which means that we didn't go down in the amount of money support that we had for every kid that was in the system the year before. 
that's a major accomplishment. It took us years to get them to recognize that you can't just add to the WPU and forget about all these other areas. And they've, they've done that, and I'm going to congratulate them on that. But I'm just going to hope that they'll recognize that right now, teachers and parapros and custodians and cooks, everybody who's associated with public ed in the state of Utah is essentially getting paid less so that we can move money over into categories to take care of roads. I think roads need to be taken care of. I don't think there's a teacher or anybody in the public school system who doesn't recognize that there are other areas of state government that need to be funded and will help pay for that on an equal basis with everybody else in the state. We'll pay our sales tax, we'll pay fuel tax, and we'll pay our property tax, and we'll also pay our income tax. But there hasn't, in all that material I've given you, and that's what's in the green folders in front of you guys, there is not one report that ever says that the amount of money going into Utah schools in the past any year has been an adequate amount of money. I mean, just adequate, let alone meeting all the needs of um, the school system. Well, we're 50th. Yeah, <laughs> in the and, we, United and, States. and <laughs> what I'm thinking is if we're 50th and we dedicate all this money from the income tax, and I can tell you, you can go back in 96 and read the material, what you'll find is people thought there was too much money going into education. And that's why that was brought up that there's too much money over here we'll just slide some over and start paying for higher ed. And we're getting that same mentality today is that there's enough money in public ed over here that it can be shared. And, and that statement that other states have one pot and pay more money, well, the pot's bigger in all those states because they all have higher tax bases. It's the only way you can do it. Mm -hmm. If we're willing to raise all the levels up, I'm, I'm okay with that, but I don't think you, you attack the one silo that's supporting public ed and, and, and hope. That was, that was exactly what was said in 96. And the Utah Education Association even said it. It's in your report if you have time to read it. It says, we'll be, we'll be better taken care of if we allow this amendment to pass. And that's when Daryl White put his arms around me and says, oh, don't worry about it, little feller. You don't know enough about Utah. To, you shouldn't even be entering into the conversation. And, and I just realized that that's an $8 billion mistake that's happened over the last 24 years. Well, I appreciate that you're putting something together. And when we have our meeting with the legislators on October the 1st, if that works yeah, out. Yeah, if, if, if we might have to move it up if they have a special session. Okay. Right. Anybody have any feedback or comments or any thoughts after reading the materials? Or looking over the if you only want to look at one report, look at the one doing, is it what, doing more with less or something? Okay. Getting it's by a, with less? It's yeah. a story of the of the time that what's happened since '96, and uh, it's all there in black and white. And uh, I, it's just Briscoe really said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we I don't know. Maybe we don't have a prayer if the Democrats have left us too. I don't know. Okay, anyway, um, I just, I felt concerned after going to that meeting. And so hopefully we can, you can let us know if there's something that we yeah. can do. Well, I, I think it comes down to every superintendent and every board working with their own individual leg legislator. Because that's the only time we'll have enough time to really get into a dialogue with them. Okay. Uh, it's not gonna happen at this meeting or that meeting. Uh, uh, because you've only got what? 90 what, seconds. How many is on the committee? 10? 12. 12. So you got 12 members of over 100 legislators, and they're going to come back and they're going to have heard all this input. 
but the rest of the legislature didn't hear it. So we've got to make sure that our the hard four, part five, is six legislators. Well, were, our legislators were there in Brigham. Yeah. Um, but they didn't hear what I want them to hear. Oh, that, well, I mean, all of our legislators were, all of ours were there except I didn't see Sandal. And um, the hard part is that our senator is Hilliard and yeah. sometimes I just want to throw my hands up. Yeah. <laughs> but, and and, he, and is, he is a really fine man and he's really a great supporter. Um, and, and when you have responsibility like he had for years of trying to have a small pot of money and all these things that had to be done, um, I'm sure in his mind he has done everything that he could for public ed. Uh, and the a biggest share of the budget has gone to public ed. I understand that. But it has never been to the level where you could say, yep, we've hit a nice level. We can, we can give some income tax money to whoever else. I just don't but, ever think it's reasonable. But you that. know that he does not support and never has um, just across the board raises for teachers. I understand um, that. He is not, he doesn't support that because um, as you know, he doesn't feel that all of the teachers deserve raises. Yeah. And my answer to that is when we get the base salary set where it's a, it's a decent level, then you can say, okay, we can start rewarding for excellence and merit but let's at least get it up where we're, we're attracting and retaining yeah, yeah. the very best people we can and then start talking about a way to reward those who do an excellent job in the classroom as opposed to maybe those who are not quite that well. So you also need to have a comeback when he says, well, police departments feel like that too. And so do social workers feel like that too. And they have to have the same or more education as educators. And the, the thought being that they don't have a... They don't, they're, they're, uh, they also in those, uh, there are many industries in the US, or in Utah where the professionals are paid lower um, than in other states. Oh, I agree. And my answer to that is, let's determine for all professions in the state of Utah how much of an, an average salary they would earn in the state of Utah. Idaho did that and they, they figured that everybody, no matter what profession you're in, earns about 85% of what they could earn in almost any other state. So they started shooting not for the average teacher salary across the nation, they were just hoping to get to the 85th percentile of the average salary across the nation. And if we just set a goal like that and we ever got to that, I think you'd hear teachers say, okay, if we're getting paid equivalent to what everybody else in the profession is being paid, the dentists are only paid 85% and doctors only earn 85% and engineers only earn 85%, then if teachers are only earning 85%, then social workers ought to earn 85% too. And we ought to work to get those salaries up to where they where they belong. And then you can start talking about giving merit payout. The only other thing I should remind you is that Sandal voted for that last minute in the Senate um, resolution to uh, remove the silo. Yeah. And he is the senator for the south end of the valley. Yeah. That's why I say we've got to work with our own people, and I and, and see, he hasn't been around. When did when did he come on the scene? Maybe six years ago. I can't remember when he became. When Rhonda left. Yeah. When Rhonda Men okay. left. Okay. So uh, he doesn't know the history, and if you don't know the history, it's awfully easy to buy into the idea. Oh well, yeah, that side over there's got a lot of money, and and in their picture, you got a bloated little pillar sitting there. If that pillar's ever been out of shape and bulging, uh, that, that's, that's just a crying shame that somebody would say that that pillar 
is has too much money in it, and we show it as this lean stock of corn over here, and this one with a whole bunch of ears. We just take a few ears off here and put them over here, and everything will be fine. I can guarantee you it won't be fine. We'll have an education system just like we have now that's only functioning because you got dedicated people who went into the profession because they realized it was maybe a calling, not a, not, a, not a way to earn a living, but just a good way to spend your life. But those days are coming to an end because people have to have enough money to make it. And we're not getting all the women who used to go into education. They found that they can go other places and make more money. Most of them could quit and go to an hourly place and make more money than they're making as a profession. And I've got a daughter who's considering doing that after six years. And she went to a state that had put that money, money into education. Yeah. Yeah. But they've fallen on hard times. Mm -hmm. huh? Anyway. All right. Well, something to think about. And um, let us know when we can help or how we can help. But I think focusing on the yeah. October 1st meeting and educating our legislators is probably a good step forward. Um, anybody have anything more to add? OK. Um, and then the last thing here for uh, the president report is Carolyn would like to know who of us w would are planning to go to the September 12th through 14th meeting so she can make reservations. Um, have you talked about this at all with your family and or have you decided if you're planning to go, do you want to get back with me? What do you want I'm to do? Going, I'm going. You're going? I can go. When does she need to know by? Um, well, it's not that far away, so she does need to get reservations while they're still living okay. there. So how about within a week? Okay. I'm planning to go. You're go going to go? Okay. And it is really a good one. It's my favorite. Yeah. It really is my favorite as far as getting training, I think. Okay. Kathy, will you put me down, please? Yep. And then, um, just for your information, Chris, um, you can bring your family along. You have to pay for their expenses, right. but the room is already paid for, and there's usually fun things that they can do. Um, some wives come, some husbands don't come. <laughs> do they, Terry? <laughs> We're just not our own. But uh, it, it's something, you know, where you get a lot of really good information and training to help you function better on the school board. So just let me know. Okay. Let okay. Me double check. Somebody. Okay. All right. And have you ever gone, Dale? Yeah. Okay. And have you ever gone? I've gone, but, okay, but yeah, probably. I don't know if I'll be able to go. Okay. Back. So within a week, I'll turn the information in. Okay. I'll be able. I'm not sure about Tanya, though. I'll check on her, though. So. Okay. So you will be there. All right. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, okay, okay, Superintendent. Just a couple of items, uh, real quick. I have a book for you called The Second Mile. I don't know if I've talked to you about this book before, have I? Anyway, I'll bring it next time. Um, it's just a great read. Um, Second Mountain, excuse me. Second Mountain, not Mile. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Most of you are at the age where you've climbed the first mountain and, uh, and you're asking, you might be asking yourself, is that all there is? Well, <laughs> this book tells you there is, that's not all there is. And uh, the quest for the second mile is where you find great joy and happiness in life. And I think you'll enjoy a great read. Then there's a podcast that I just want to introduce you to. I don't know how many of you are into podcasting, but there's a, there's a podcast site called How to Take Over the World. Okay? Um, how to Take Over the World is a, just a, a guy who got his education in Utah somewhere. I mean, university. I, education um, so he knows he knows about Utah but he just decided that the podcast he was listening to just didn't have what he wanted and so he's taken on the challenge of either interviewing or gaining enough knowledge that he can talk about people 
who are the really, truly great people of the world. And um, I think you'll just find it fascinating if you want to want to listen. Um, he's done Napoleon. He's done Steve Jobs. He's done... Uh, um, oh, I'm having a mental block. But anyway, um, I think uh, if, if you want to spend time with the great people of the world and what, how they changed the world, Steve Jobs is a great one to start with. If you want, if you want to know um, how this man... Uh, has got everybody in the whole world looking at a little nine-inch screen. Um, it's, it's a fascinating story. And he wanted to, to expose the world to the really people who have changed the world, Napoleon Bonaparte. And he even did one on uh, Putin. Putin's is very interesting. Uh, so anyway, I... Um, how to take over the world podcast or if you look it up on on the computer the website is the first letter of each of those words h t t o t w that's the website h t t o t w and i think you'll find it uh, very intellectually stimulating and very thought provoking and will uh, lead you to be a uh, better educated person so if you're interested by the way the second mountain is a great book that's the david brooks book right? yeah, yeah. you've read it i've read a chunk of it oh it's it's just writer. it's just fantastic do you have any extra copies of the leaders eat last book uh she ordered a few more copies yep i don't know if the board would be interested in that's reading a great that book one. but it's yeah. really yeah it's really, really a good good read. how many how many had did we uh, we didn't pass it out to board? Uh -huh. I have a copy of it. Okay. I know I have a copy uh, of it. Just we'll get a copy of that, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, anybody have anything that we need to bring up? Okay. Everyone uh, knows how to get to my house? Right. I think I remember. Okay. okay. Maybe. <laughs> All right. You cannot find it from, by the address. You ha you'll have to GPS it or ask me for directions to get there. What is the address again, though? 234 okay. North, okay. 8, 10 East. Her, so. <laughs> 8, 8, 10 East. Uh -huh. You can get us there. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is your wife coming, Dale? Okay. She's helping set up. Huh? <laughs> She's helping Mike oh, set up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Were there directions in that email you sent? Um, I don't know if Carolyn put directions on there or not. I'll talk to you after. Uh, okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you um, coming out in the summertime. And just for your information, I think we already mentioned this, but the next meeting is the second Thursday rather than the first Thursday. Okay? All right. If there's nothing else, then this meeting is adjourned.